all these social platforms, they're hilarious to me today. Like, there's, there's these things called filters that you take pictures, right? You can do a video or whatever. You can, you can transform yourself from anything from a baby to a, 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 a cartwheeling monkey. Like you can actually, I mean, you can actually change the complexion of your skin. You can change the dimensions of your body. You can change your eye color. You can change the. I mean, like you can pres You can. It's like it's like a a, a, a internet Mr. Potato Head. You can put whatever you want on your body and present that to people as the true identity of who you are. But what happens is that you get that attention of who people think you are. So now you got to keep that up. So now you start augmenting yourself in the physical and in the spiritual to represent what you've been showing to people. I'm going to turn on myself a little bit here. It ain't nothing that I don't do all the time. So I love... I don't, I'm not going to say that. I love. I started changing my language. I like oranges a lot. And I was introduced to oranges like really eating them a lot in high school. Like when we had camp two a days and stuff for football practice, they would give it to us for nutrients and and I just started eating them up gobble them up. And it happened, it kept, you know, they kept giving us this for nutrients and stuff during camp from high school to college. And then college finished and then after college, after a little while of college, I didn't eat oranges no more. But people didn't know my little dirty dark secret that I had about oranges. I couldn't peel them. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't. So what I would do, I would ask the trainers, one of the trainers who were females, because they had uh, nails. Like, Yo, could you? Peel a couple for me, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause I, you know, it's hard because I bit my nails. I didn't have any nails. I bit them down to the skin, right? But because I could not peel the orange no more, I went to the easiest thing that resembled the orange, which was orange juice. Now, I didn't know back then, but Orange juice is the furthest thing from a natural orange that you can drink. It's like 60, 70 grams of sugar in there. Like, I mean, it's ridiculous. But it was cool because I would drink it and because of the sugar rush, I didn't know back then, I thought it was replenishing me like the orange did. So I kept on drinking it until I found out what was in it. And then glory be to God. I got a woman, a wife, <laughs> who had nails, <laughs> who can start peeling my oranges again. But there were times that she wasn't around. So I found out a way to do it myself. What happens is, is that when we get in the presence of God, when we, if you spend quiet time with the Lord, Everything has to be stripped and peeled off. But because of the world and what they put on you and been speaking to you, in the beginning you can't peel it yourself. So that's why we say don't dismiss community because there's somebody in here who got nails. Who can, who can help peel off what the world has done to you, what the world's been saying to you, what the world's been doing to you. But what happens is, is when God, he invites us to maturity, the person who is hearing from God is like, okay now baby, I don't hold, held your hand long enough. Now you got to grow up. They detach themselves because God is doing something in your life. But it becomes hard to peel that orange. So now we go to drinking orange juice. Now we go to churches and places of worship that water down scripture. 
Now we go to places and uh, uh, places and churches now that feed us sugar, that give us this high, that we sit in here, woo, hallelujah, go outside, and then thirty minutes later you down on the, you, you crashing, mm -hmm. and you're wondering why God is not moving in your life. It's because you don't want to peel because it's hard. There's something that happened in the garden. They were pure in front of God. They were naked in front of God. They had no knowledge of what else was out there because their focus was on Him. But all of a sudden, their desire drove them a different way. Now to the normal person, right, who doesn't understand scripture, be like, what's the point? I mean, like, they just ate fruit, bro. Like, they became wise. I mean, doesn't that, doesn't the Bible say wisdom is good? Yeah. It does say wisdom is good. But the thing is, is that Adam and Eve lost their identity because they were already like God. They already had Access to what they wanted, but they didn't want to appeal. All they had to do was go to God and ask, Hey, I want wisdom just like you, homie. I want wisdom, I want knowledge, I want understanding. I want He did not withhold anything from them. He said, just don't eat this. Come to me for it, basically, is what he was saying. Because this tree is going to give you something artificial that's going to hide you away from me. So now I can't rock with you no more. We've lost our relationship because now I can't see who you are. You think he was walking through the... You think God didn't know where they were? Come on. But when he came through, he was like, hey, where y'all at? He was giving them, giving them an opportunity to peel. He was giving them an opportunity to repent. He was giving them an opportunity to come clean before him. And what's happening is, is with us is because things get on us and things start weighing us down. Things get in our spirit that when we go to God, we are not coming to him naked. We are coming to him with an Instagram filter. We are coming to him with a TikTok filter. We are coming to him with a Snapchat filter. Because we've been fed this diseased ideology in church that we gotta be perfect. That if you're not squeaky clean, you can't come before God. But my Bible says that he's close to the broken heart. Brokenhearted is not clean. We have to stop. We, we in this world of, of like sanitizer now, right? People don't walk three feet without sanitizing. But we don't sanitize. We, we are sanitizing when we come to God. We come to Him like, oh Father, all glory in heaven and in the earth. We beseech you. Glory be the King. I just want to thank you for everything. The moon, the sun, and the trees, and the stars. The birds and the bees. Thank you, Father, for Chipotle. Thank you for Pepsi soda. But you just had a drop dead, fall out, cussing back and forth battle with your parents. And you coming to God like that. Knowing that if your parent call you what or come in your face, you going to snatch the living soul out of their body. I think that we really do not understand the value of us. I think we, we hold ourselves to the standard of 
man and their idea and ideology of success. There's, there's a, a process called stripping in wood. Before you do something to us, and, and the stripping is only for the good wood. It's only for the top tier kind. And, and walls and paint. They have to physically do away with, listen here, they do a process that's called sand. Sanding serves to remove imperfection on rough surfaces so, so the surface can be filled with compound and adhere easily. Listen to that. We have to go to God and strip every single thing away because if we don't, he can't fill in the cracks. He can't paint a new picture if we want to keep the old one up. He can't present you brand new in front of God if you are not strict. God cannot bless who we pretend to be. God will not remove what we want to hold on to. This is a symbiotic relationship. It says co we are co-laborers with him, which means we got we to gotta do some hand movement and feet movement and we have a part to play in the kingdom of God. All of that God to do it on his own stuff. Uh, he'll do it through somebody. If it ain't you. Can God do it? Of course. Could God have served the earth without creating Adam and Eve? 100%. But why did he? Why did he create you? He created Adam and Eve. So he, they could be a representation and the glory of him on here. He created them. We are all created to worship. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know this or not. But everything you say, do, think, act, go, is worshiping someone or something. Mm -hmm. Every single thing. You might not think it. But when you're saying yes to one thing, you're saying no to another. So whatever that yes thing is happening is your God at that moment. So we're put here to, to worship Him. we put here to worship Him. Let's go to um, John 4, 24. Pretty sure if you've been in church for a while, you know this verse. It says God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. It does not say spirit or truth. And is a conjunction word, which means one can't exist without the other. Or something, if both of them are not present, something is missed. It is not complete worship until these two things are happening. Spirit and truth. And what's happening is, is that the truth part is being diluted. You drink an orange juice, but it's full of water and sugar. So now, guess what? In your mind, you ain't gotta eat oranges for what? You're drinking orange juice. I know people who live off of orange juice. And I'm surprised why they ain't got diabetes or something like that. Nothing but the grace of God. But we're drinking the juice and we think we are 100% okay. We gotta say no. The reason why you're not maturing, the reason why things are not moving, the reason why is because you are not worshiping me in spirit and truth. I need you to worship me in the truth of your moment. I need you to worship me in the truth 
of your circumstance. Listen here. Where do we where do we get this ideology that God can't handle us being upset? Or disappointed? Listen here. Or even jealous. Where, where do we get this thing that we can't bring our whole selves and open ourselves naked before God and say, God, if you don't come down right now, I'm going to punch a hole in this dude's chest. I need you to physically, by your spirit, keep my hands in my pocket because if my thumb come out, he going to feel the wrath. But what happened, I'm telling you, but what happened is, is we got away from the power of God. We're not teaching power no more. So we, the power is not being taught. Now we think that God has no power. So we're not asking for it. We're asking for his blessing, thinking that it's his power. Even God's blessing is contingent upon what you do. It's contingent upon what you believe. It's contingent on your obedience. How can I be obedient and can't be truthful? Hmm. Bible has a story in there with two sons. They say, hey, what if a father went to one of the sons and said, um, look here, I need you to do something. And the son be like, okay, Pops, I got you, man. No problem. And don't do it at all. And one of the sons goes to him like, come on, Pops. Like, man, are you serious? Fine. And they go do it. He said, which one do you think is being obedient? <laughs> it's the one who is truthful, but did it anyway. Right. It's okay. To be upset and do it anyway. It's okay. Listen here. It's okay to do it in fear. It's okay to be scared and do it. It doesn't become sin until the fear paralyzes you from not doing it. It's okay to do it and still be depressed. It's okay to do it and still be angry. God can honor that and he can do something with that because you gave it to him to do something with. Right. Father, I give you this anger and this bitterness. I'm going to need you to help now because I'm going to my family function. <laughs> <laughs> they, did, they, did, they did a nerve, didn't they? <laughs> Father, I'm going to this family function now. You... I respect my elders, but if you know a big mama start talking that mess, it's gonna be some. As they say, it's gonna be some furniture moving. Or God, I'm in this atmosphere right now, in this situation, and I don't have the finances to change it. And you know, my heart does not want to be doing what's happening in this place. So, Father, I give it to you right now because mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie to you. I want to do it. But I know by your power you can hold me and comfort me. And I guarantee you his power will show up in your life. Lord, I'm getting up this morning. I know I need to be at church at 10 30. But I don't want to go. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm weary. I ain't got nothing to wear. The baby crying. Woke up on the wrong side of the bed. This one done got dressed and got mustard all over the shirt. I don't even know how that happened. One got chocolate in her nose. I didn't... <laughs> but I know if I press, you'll meet me. I know you'll meet me there because you, wherever you are, there's freedom and liberty. So when I come through the doors, I might not feel like it. I say, Lord, I don't feel like worshiping right now. You know, I had a heck of a morning. <laughs> Baby need clothes, wife needs shoes. But then all of a sudden, the little foot starts to tap. Your head and your body just start to swing. <laughs> your hands just start to raise. 
And before you know it, you are lost in the presence of God. Because you were truthful, but you still were obedient. What happens is, is that I'm, I'm going to this and I don't talk about this. We are wrong. We're going, to start, we're going to dive into finances real quick. Hmm. Hear me when I say this with my heart. I know I don't talk about money at all. <laughs> but if talking about money grips your heart, that's your God. Hmm. If God is saying, hey, $10, just give them $10. It don't matter if they got $10 or not. I know of a story. Matter of fact, it's these people on TikTok who do this. They go to a place, they go to a grocery store, they say, hey man, look, I ain't got no money right now. Could you pay for this water for me? Like, I gotta go, I'm, I'm having trouble, I left my wallet broken. And they're like, yeah, man, sure. And then as soon as they do that, they're like, man, you know what? We just go to places and places and we just see the hearts of people hit with five grand cash. They do that. There's another, uh, another TikTok people who go through drive throughs this is why you have to be truthful. They go through drive throughs and they ask people, what is your dream? They provide dreams to be realities for people. No matter what it is. They done bought people plane tickets to Tokyo. They done bought people cars. Help people with down payments on houses. This is why we have to be truthful. Because if you don't, you're going to miss it. What God has for you, especially when you're in his presence. Mm -hmm. And he will give you wisdom to who to be truthful to now. Yeah. Let me let me let me disclaim that. Do not tell everybody your business. Use wisdom with that. Listen here. Use wisdom, not worldly wisdom. Just because you have a spat with this person, don't mean that they ain't gonna help you. Because the Bible I read says he lays up the wealth of the wicked for the chest. So how can you go get the thing for the just if you don't deal with the wicked? Oh, that's another hole. Sorry. We have to be boldly, unfully clothed in front of God because He's always up to something. I call him Jehovah Sneaky. Because <laughs> even if you don't feel him, hear him, know he's around, he's up to something. But the catch is, we got to know what he's up to. We, we've gone so far away from paying attention to the signs of the times to pay attention to the signs of me. What's going on in my life? How can, how can my prayers improve my life? I told you, I'm going to say this a lot. The Lord hit me one time, said, Eric, if I answered every single one of your prayers, whose kingdom would be expounded, yours or mine? Whose life would it change? Just yours? Or somebody in the kingdom? And I had to check and change the way I pray. Not saying that I don't petition him for stuff. Come on now. Because the Bible says that. But I say, nevertheless, if this is not in your will for me, God, sidebar, when did we start telling God what his will is? I, I, I don't, it, it's incomprehensible to me. To come to, to, to come to anyone and say, you know what? Zoe, God's will for me is to be rich. <laughs> Where does it say that in the Bible? Or God's will is for his saints to be poor. We don't know what he wants. He gave Solomon wisdom, money, stature, and everything. But the apostles who walked with him were crucified and died broke. <laughs> he do what he wanted to do. Right. He do with what he wanted to do with who he wants to do it with when he wants to do it. 
How do we get so prideful and arrogant that we can stand in the pulpit and tell somebody that God wants to bless your business? But you in sin. You swindling, you stealing, having sex out of wedlock, cheating. But we get up here and say, God wants to bless you. As long as you tithe, as long as you give money now, you can be doing whatever you want to do. Matter of fact, let's have a giving day. I want you to pray for these 21 days of what God wants to do. He wants to give you a, a, a what? Ha. Remember God told me one time I was in a hissy fit with God. He said, God, I need an answer. So I'm going to I'm going to petition your throne. I'm going to fast three days and then that third day you going to get, I believe God that you're going to give me an answer. He said, really? When did you start putting limits on me? Who are you to tell me and dictate to when I'm going to speak to you? And he showed my, he, said, he gave me a vision of my son having a temper tantrum one time. And he said, that's you. You sitting there. That's what you're doing in the spirit right now. Trying to force my hand. He said, you can try to force my hand, but you won't be disappointed. What if I wanted to give you a... What if I don't want you to fast? What, 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 if, what if I just want you to stop eating sugar? What, what if I just want you to start working out? I saw me... It said, it said the, according to the church, the Holy Spirit had the power to do any, everything that said, make saints go to the gym. <laughs> Y'all don't see some new people up in the pulpit now. Come on. <laughs> Trying to cast out demons. <laughs> 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 they ain't, help, they ain't hot preaching like that. They preach because they can't believe. <laughs> because we don't want to be truthful. If I have an issue and I know somebody, if I have an issue and I know it's a trainer in here, I'm going to come to you and be like, look, I got a problem eating cake and working out. Can you help me? They're like, yeah, man. I, work, I get you a program. I'm, I'll do whatever you want to do. But we sit and say, oh, we're so holier than thou. We have no issues. That's why pastors kill themselves. That's why pastors quit. Because they think they can't be naked. Number one, in front of God. <laughs> There's no way you can be naked in front of God and he not answer. He answered them right after they said they were not perfect. He came and spoke to them. Hey, where you at? Right after they sinned. But a relationship changed. The dynamic changed. That just shows that God is still love you. He loves you. He loves everybody. But the relationship ain't the same. The relationship I got with my son ain't the same as I got with y'all. It's different because we walked together for 13 or 14 years. So the dynamic has to be different. What's happening is, is God is moving and we're not moving with him. We're not moving with him because he is forcing us to mature. Wait, how do we get this ideology that God doesn't want us to mature even though when it happens in the physical? You can't go to second grade until you do first. Or even if you get skipped, you have to prove that you can skip that grade. So if it's in the natural, you think that God doesn't have a plan in the, in, I mean, a plan in the spiritual? The Bible says we gotta go from milk to solid foods. And what happens is, is people go from milk to solid foods, but they don't rejoice. When you have a baby and they go from milk to solid food, it's a picture on every single social media outlet you got. My baby eating solid food now. Eating collard greens, chicken, look at me eating a whole chicken leg. 
We don't celebrate the things of God. We celebrate every birthday. We need to start celebrating baptism birthdays. This is the day that I became new. This is the day that God erased everything and he gave me a new identity. He gave me a new destiny. He made me clean. He made me pure and righteous before him because what happens is, is we forget. We go into God with clothes on and these long eyelashes. <laughs> we go into him just a blinking. <laughs> we got makeup on. We go into him looking to the world just as clean as possible. And he's looking at something just as dirty as it can be. And he's inviting us to a place of being truthful with him because he only deals in spirit and in truth. Let's go to James 1, 22. I like James. James tell it real. James ain't no joke. Even though he didn't believe Jesus was the son of God, he was alive, but we're not going to go there. James 1.22, it says, Do not merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and does not, uh, not, not a doer, he is like a man who intently looks intently at his natural face in a mirror, for he looks at himself and goes away and forgets who he was. If we do not spend time with God, you will forget who you are. We can get caught up in doing things for God and replace it for being with God. Just because I drink orange juice don't mean it's nutritious. Just because it looks like oranges, it smells like oranges, it tastes like oranges, it's not oranges. What happens is, is we sit there, we look at somebody from the outside. Oh man, they reading their Bible, they in the front, they laying hands on everybody, and God is like, Ooh, get thee away from me. I know you not. And we like, that person is holy. Glory be to God. And that's the one you tell your truth to who was stabbing you in the back, number one. This is what happens. We get so caught up in doing things that we put on the back burner becoming something. We are supposed to become gradually the image of Jesus daily. It's not to look and be an Eric 2.0. It's not to be the best version of Eric. It's not to be the fittest version and the best communicator and the most knowledgeable. Everybody seeks him out for wisdom. Eric, no. It is to form into the image of Jesus daily and present our bodies as a living sacrifice before God so he can do what he wants to do because he knows what you need. I don't care how many books you read, how many John Maxwell leadership books, how many T.D. Jakes, Woman Thou Art Loose tapes and books, you, he, they still don't have the, I don't even know the word, I can't even, the, the, the grain of sand wisdom that God has. They have experience, yes. Can we learn some things from them? 100%. Can we gain some wisdom from them? 100%. But I'm not holding that wisdom above God's. Because that was God's will for them. That was their track lane to run in. That was their path. 
we might be going in the same direction, but if I'm in lane one and you in lane eight, it's different. We all got the same finish line. <clears throat> Even in track, they give you lanes by your time. <laughs> they put you in lanes by your time, which means there's some people who are faster and there's some people who are slower. But guess what? They're running in the same race. God does not remove them. We all have the same race. You might not be running a 9-9-100. You might not be running a 10.0-100. If you want a 12-3, that's fine. But that's your race. You might not get the same prize, but that wasn't your prize to get. We want everything and we see people's lives and we just want to emulate those lives. Listen here. I love Tabitha way more than anybody in here. She's the sweetest thing I've ever seen. Her voice is so soothing, baby. She probably can cuss you out like this and you'd be like, yes, ma'am. But I'm not trying to be like Tabitha. Because that's not my race. I can't look at what she got and say, that's what I'm supposed to be. Because it's not. I don't know. All I'm going to do is trust God and move. I'm going to seek his face. I'm going to say, strip it all away. I'm going to say, Father, I just want to, I'm caught up in your presence. Take me to where you want to go. The man that you have healed is in front of you. And I come to worship you. Show me, point me, take me to where you want me to be. Because if I get caught up in me, my God. If I get caught up in my own heart and in my own mind and my eyes, my God, it's going to lead me to disappointment. God will, I'm, I, I am a 100% proof that seeking God, He will put people in your path as you go to do what He wants to do for your life. Not chasing man, but chasing Him. Mm. We are not to worship man. No. Honor, yes. We are to honor people yeah. for their services. Yeah. But when it comes down to worship, there's only one who deserved that. And his name is God. We are getting the honor mixed up with the worship. It's being muddied because we have demons spitting things from the pulpit. They're, they're interchanging words. They're saying, oh, don't you want to do this for the kingdom? But in their heart, they're saying, my kingdom? Don't you want to give to the house of God? But in their heart, they're like, yo, I need this new mansion. Don't you want to help us get a church van so we can go around and pick up people across the neighborhood? They're like, man, I need an extra 15 for this Tesla. <laughs> Not knowing that all they have to pursue is God. And He will provide. He will provide. Hear me, I don't care where you are. He will, that's a word for somebody. He will provide. Stop hustling. Stop hustling. Stop hustling. Because you know what hustling is? Hustling is pursuing something other than God. Hustling is, I got to go and get this. No matter what. I got, that's what the world is telling you. Hey, somebody's working harder than you. Somebody's doing this and that and third. I'm not saying don't work hard. I'm saying do everything as unto God. If you're going to do it, do it in excellence and purpose. I guarantee you, somebody will see your product and say, this is done in excellence. Who is this individual? And seek you out. 
They will seek you out for your services. I was watching this thing on TV. Who was it? Y'all don't judge me. I was watching, uh, watching Drink Champs. <laughs> it's this show where they actually go on and they drink liquor and smoke weed and they talk. <laughs> but it's interesting to hear the stories. I don't, I'm just going to say, by what they do, they are not followers of Jesus. I'm not saying they don't call themselves Christians. I'm saying they are not followers of Christ, if you can hear me. Okay? This guy named Herb got it. Hey. <laughs> he, was sit, he was sitting on there talking, and he said the most, he was high as a kite too. He said, and dr drunk. He, but he said the most profound thing to me. He said he was chilling with one of his billionaire friends who owns the Milwaukee Bucks. He said, I was chilling at his house. I'm having this conversation with him. He said, and I'm throwing all these ideas at him. Like all these things I got going on in my mind. All pitching all of this stuff to him. And he said, you know what, Herb? You got it backwards. He said, you're looking for the wrong thing. Because Herb was like, man, I got all these ideas, but I just don't have the money. I just don't have the money that I need to do what I feel is in my mind. And the rich man said, you, your mindset is totally wrong. He said, money is easy to get. He said, because the people with the money don't have the ideas. He said, money funding is easy to get. Because they, the ones who have the money don't have the time or the creativity to provide what you can provide. And he said, that man went to one of his other rich millionaire friends and they had a conversation. He was telling him about all these ideas that Herb had and everything and he said, in 24 hours, he went from zero to having a $250 million budget. Herb wasn't out there hustling. He was truthful with this man. And said, man, I got these things in my mind. I just ain't got the money. Now, if he said this to a man and he provided. You think that God Almighty will not provide for his child? You think that a good father will withhold something from you that you're supposed to have? Mm, I doubt it. But what's happening is we have these diluted values that come into our hustle. Don't sleep. You got sleep all you did. The sleep and don't sleep. Rich people don't sleep. That's a lie. Rich people sleep very well. <laughs> And wherever they want to. <laughs> they sleep on a jet. They sleep on a boat. Some of them went to space, sleep on a rocket. They sleep wherever they please, real crap and good. And God is like, you keep hustling. Keep performing. I'm not in it. But hard work, it comes with benefits. But what I give has no sorrow. And I'm going to give you, this is another. What God gives to you will not take you away from him. So if it's taking you away from him, it's not God. What he gives draws you near. God is a drawer. He says, no man comes to God unless he draws them. That's what the word says. God doesn't repel. We do. He said, God will never leave or forsake us. But we leave and forsake God. He says, nothing can snatch him out of his hand. But we walk out. It's because we're searching something else other than his face. And we're not being truthful in his presence. Listen here. You, I'm open and I'm transparent. I don't went to God before and said, God, I want to be famous. I want to be well known. I 
want to be well known for your kingdom. I want to be one of the giants of faith in this world. The only thing he asked me was why. It's the only thing. And I said, God, because I want them to know that your power is real. And I want them to know the real from the fake because we have these demonic peaches and pastors and leaders up in this country spitting this venom and this acid upon your people that is killing their minds, killing their hearts, killing their spirits. That's why I want to be. That's why I want to go. I don't care about money. You know I don't, God. I give it all away if you ask me to. Only if you ask me. <laughs> Not stupid. I will give whatever you desire for me to give. But I just want to be an instrument of your glory on this earth until I die. However it comes, I don't care. If I got to take all the arrows for everybody else to run, shoot me up, Scotty. I give you the front and I give you the back. But at least I know what's coming behind is taken care of. That should be our mindset. We're not going to see every single seed that we sow, y'all. We're not. We're not. But that don't mean that we ain't supposed to sow them. You might not have what you need to help somebody else, but I guarantee you, you have what you need. I remember God was looking for some money. I said, like, God, man, I ain't got no money. He said, yes, you do. I said, God, I ain't got no job. He said, but you got money. I said, God, no, I don't. He said, go in your closet. There's something called eBay. I need you to depart with some of this because it's still got tags on it. You got money in your hand. You got creativity in your hand. But what's happening, oh, Jesus, help me, please, Lord. But what's happening is we're wanting compensation for our participation. We think God owes us something. We want the blessings of God without being inconvenienced and snatched out of our comfort zone because we think he owes us something because we think we're doing it for him. No, you're not. Your minuscule little business and mindset and gift does not expand the kingdom of God. He can do it on his own. But the thing is, is he is so gracious. And so merciful that he invites us to participation, to co-laborship with him and say, look, let's do this together. Not for your glory, but for my glory, because there's people out there who knew you before. There's people out there who knew what you used to do. There's people out there who knew what you used to say, what you used to drink, what you used to smoke, what you used to wear, what you used to drive, how you used to smell. That when I present you in front of them, they say, I oh, they got to be a God. Because this one here, woo, woo. And if God can turn them around, I want to be that number. The thing that haunts me at night, the thing that haunts me at night, I'm not going to lie. Is the fear that I missed opportunities to present God to people. That's the only thing that haunts me. Because God is forever speaking. He's forever speaking. He's speaking to some of y'all right now. What, what he's saying to y'all is hitting your heart. And I'm not talking specifically to you, but he is. So if it's hitting you, receive it. Don't be in guilt, shame, or condemnation. Kick the shoe off and put another shoe on and say, Father, I'm going to move forward. Because guilt and shame and condemnation is not God. Conviction is. So if your heart is getting convicted, deal with that thing and say, Father, I repent. I'm going to jump in the pool I'm, and I'm going to go underwater and I'm going to listen to your voice and I'm going to swim until I get to where you want me to be. 
Because God has to blur some of our visions. Because He know we are we 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 are uh, 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 we are we want to be ten steps ahead. Somebody asked me, "Well, what's your five year plan?" I said, "I don't know." This pastor asked, "I don't know. I don't know my five minute plan from right now." But the one thing I do know is five years from now, I answered like this. I said, "I want to look more like Jesus." How? I have no clue. I'm going to make good choices. I'm going to seek him before I make choices. I'm going to seek him before I do things. I'm going to seek him before I say things. But he might tell me to go this way one day. And then just like Joseph, he might give him another dream and say, go to Egypt. Don't go there because the king is here. The son is there. So if the son is there, I know you're... Listen, God said to Joseph, I know you're afraid. So instead of going there because Herod's son is reigning, go to Nazareth. What if Joseph wasn't truthful? What if Joseph was not truthful with God? And went anyway, like I'm big and bold. And we've been like the son of Skeeva, the running out there butt naked beat up. <laughs> Because we're talking about in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches. <laughs> and they just oh, and, and beating us up. Because we're going in the faith of God. And he's like, no, I need you to turn. He, I need to turn, turn, turn. Like, no, God, I'm going there in faith. You said I can achieve it. You said I can receive it. I shot, I, 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 and I'm going and I'm going in faith. And he's like, well, my grace and mercy be with you, but it ain't there. And now I'm, oh, Lord, you said, and you be like, I said it yesterday, but you didn't see me this morning. I had a different direction for you to go. This is another word for some people. He's going to start removing people from around you because they're, they... Because they, they know you, how they met you, and God is bringing you into another identity. Yes. There's going to be some people who are going to detach themselves from you. Family, friends, business partners. Because they know you, how they met you. We have to get out of this thing. I said this Friday. We got to get out of this thing of holding Jesus to where we met him. We have to stop holding God hostage to how he found us. Because how he found us is not the way we're supposed to stay. I can't treat my son like I did when he was two. He's a grown, almost a grown, stinky, but 13 year old boy. <laughs> I can't be going up to you want some snacky way. <laughs> you want some juicy woozy? Look at me like I'm insane. <laughs> but that's what we're expecting from God. We're going to say, come on now. I'm going to take you every step of the way. Hold my hand. And we hold his hand. And then all of a sudden, he just starts to go like this. He's walking in front of us like, come on. Come on. You, you, know, you know my heart. You know my voice. Just listen. Come on. Follow me. Follow me. And you're like, no, Lord. I want juicy woozy and snacky way. He's like, no, bro. That's where most of us are right now. We're in this transitional phase of going from milk, not to solid foods, but stuff that's a little bit more digestible. But the reason why we choking on it is because we ain't truthful. The reason why we're not growing is because we're not being truthful. The reason why we ain't getting the nutrients is because peeling has become hard. And now you're saying, well, hey, how do I be truthful? I'm, I'm going to give you all a couple of scriptures from a person who God says is a man. After his own heart. Okay? 
I want, I want y'all to he, I want y'all to see and pay attention to the words of this. Let's go to Psalms 109. 1 through 14. <laughs> Two to four. Do I? Starting from two. I'll read it. I'll just be copying and pasting some stuff. You know, man. It says, God of my praise, do not be silent. For they have opened a wicked and deceitful mouth against me. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. They have also surrounded me with words of hatred and have fought against me without, without cause. In return for my love, they act as my accusers, but I am in prayer, so they have repaid me good for evil and hatred for my love. Appoint a wicked person over them and make an accuser stand at his right hand. He is judged. May he come out guilty and may his prayer become sin. May his days be few. May another take his office. May his children be fatherless and his wife a widow. May his children wander about and beg. And may they seek sustenance from their ruined homes. May the creditor see everything that he has. And may strangers plunder the poor of his labor. May there be none to extend kindness to him, nor to be gracious to his fatherless children. May his descendants be eliminated. May their name be wiped out in a following generation. May the guilt of his fathers be remembered before the Lord. And do not let the sin of his mother be wiped out. How more clearer and transparent and truthful about the position you are in right now can you be? He said, God, I what make it that they make it that they are erased out the record books. <laughs> like, let him die and his children become orphans and his wife become a widow and somebody else has come and plunders everything. How much transparent can you get? This is a man who God said, sister, is after his own. Heart. Why? Where did we get off track that we can't be as truthful as this? Where did we where, where did we get off? Where do we get off that we think that God is so small he can't handle us being angry for a moment? He can't handle us being truthful. Father, I want to go out here and be a whore. <laughs> because somebody hurt me. I don't want to be attached to nobody anymore. I just want the feel, the sex sensation. I just want to go out there and drink. I want to do me. But because I belong to you, I'm not. Lord, I'm feeling these same sex, sex attractions. I'm feeling it when I get around such and such as something different. But I know I belong to you. And that is not in my nature. Lord, this thing is in my heart to pursue. I have a passion for this thing in my heart. Check it to make sure I'm not pursuing in a wicked manner. And a selfishness and greed mentality. So that I can build my kingdom. So that I can get glory. And people can look at me as a success story. There's a problem if your passion is not for God. Because if it ain't for him, it's for somebody else. And that somebody else will lead you to death. The enemy will show you things and say, yes, God put this in your heart. God gave you this ability. God gave you this vision. God gave you, of, of course, God gave it to you to be used at his disposal. Not yours. To be glorified. To, to make him be, to, to glorify God is why he gave it to you. Can I tell you something? I'm end on this. Don't hate me. I 
love you and I. Your gift, your talent, and your ability is not just to make money. It's to glorify God. And it's to help expand his kingdom. Let's keep that in the forefront of our hearts. And in the forefront of our minds. That we ain't doing this Y'all ain't doing nothing for me. Y'all ain't doing nothing for churches. It's for God. There's plenty of times I've been under leadership that treated me like trash. But I said, I'm doing this for God. I'm not doing this for recognition from them. That's when we get caught up. You know how I can tell when you're doing it for yourself is when you get your feelings hurt. Uh-oh. And even a warning, I took a sip. <laughs> Who are you doing it for? Who are you doing it for? Strip it all away. Strip it all away. Down to the bare essence of who you are. And say, God, this is me, flaws and all. I'm coming to you broke. I'm coming to you confused. I'm coming to you angry. I'm coming to you crippled. I'm coming to you maimed. I'm coming to you unwhole. I'm coming to you because I know you are the God of restoration. You are the God of healing. You are the God of wholeness, of joy beyond understanding. It's nowhere in the Bible that said he's supposed to make us happy. He says joy. Happiness is attached to happenings. He says joy is attached to a person. And his name is Jesus. You don't have joy in your life. I caution you to be careful. Happiness is a drug because when one thing doesn't give it to you you won't search it out from somewhere else and you won't keep jumping and jumping and jumping and people won't keep using you using you and using you and you won't keep getting broken and broken and broken and broken to the point that you turn your back on God because you think he failed you he didn't fail you he's been telling you to come all this time but you're scared because you say, I'm broken. How can you use me, God? How can you use this broken, used up, beat up vessel? And he says, I do my best work with dirt. Do my best work with broken. So if you were here, this is the second invitation, and you want God to strip it away, and you've been telling him, God, I can't be used. How can you use me? I don't do this, and I don't do that, and I don't do this, and I don't do that, but he's saying you are worthy because my son died on the cross for you before you were even thought of. He knew this day was going to come. He knew it. And he's giving you an invitation this morning. He's reaching out to you. He's drawing you. You've, you feel a tug on your heart. Stop wrestling. Stop wrestling. Wrestle with him, but they say, your arm's too short to box with God. <laughs> your arm's too short. You ain't going to win. So if that's you this morning, I want you to, you know what? Just raise your hand if that's you this morning. Got you. 
There's a couple more, but I'll let God deal with that. I'll let God deal with that. The ones that raise your hand, you know God. But what's happening is he's forcing you to mature. So you don't need to be prayed for. He, you need to seek him on your own. He has to do this. He has to do this. So that you can know that you can tap in on your own. Because it's not about getting a word from a pastor. It's about getting a word from God. Anywhere and everywhere. And if you can't tap it on your own, and you got to call me for every single thing, there's a problem. That's what the church is trying to do. Keep y'all coming back, coming back, coming back. Come get this drug. Whoosh. Now, I want you to get high on your own. God wants you to get high on your own. Force your flesh. To get in his presence. Force it. You might be tired. You might be sleepy. You might be angry. But force it. And be truthful. I don't feel like being here bro. But. Nevertheless. I'm open. Ask him to show you. I challenge you. I challenge you. And be open to what he says. Don't be closed off. And be obedient to what he says. Don't be stubborn. Because it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. I'm telling you now. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to tell you no, 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 no lies. This life ain't easy. This chosen life is not easy. But it's worth it. And the thing is, is that he, I want you to just, I want you to sit in this statement right here. He chose you to work through for such a time as this. So if you don't feel valuable, I don't know how much more valuable you can get to be chosen, to be picked and plucked, pointed to, to be used by the Almighty God. You can't get no more valuable than that. So Father, yes, let's just pray. So Father, I thank you for what you're going to do in the lives of people who are surrendered to you and the people who want to be stripped but don't know how. So by your Holy Spirit, I pray that you go in and you clean inside out and you fill them with your spirit to the point of, of, of they just... When people are around them, they just feel something different. They just, they get brighter in the physical. That their skin changes and, and their mannerisms change. And, and their thoughts change and their yearnings change and their desires change. Father, so that can, they can have that testimony of a used to life. So that you can get the glory. This ain't for them. This ain't for me. This is for you, Father. And help us. Help us to make you the object of our affection. In the mighty, majestic, powerful, unmatchable name of Jesus, I do pray. Amen.